fall sports has been a huge question here in America, really, because of the coronavirus. So today, we are joined by Mr. Rob DeArmond. He is a sports editor here at the News. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the News, and we're going to talk about some things that have been floating around as of late, uh, especially with regard to fall sports. Uh, there's there's a lot of different moving parts to this, uh, a lot of confusion because LHSAA has their own phases, the state has theirs. We're going to get into all that, but first, welcome you back to the the new booth. I guess you could say the the social distancing booth. How are you, Rob? It's been a while. Do, doing well, man. Doing well. Uh, I, I was going to say, how does this thing work? It's uh, I'm trying to get back in the saddle and and see how uh, things come together here. Right. I, I was actually looking in our archives and I was like, gosh, man, the last time we sat down was when we were talking with coaches and it was playoff time for basketball. basketball. We, I mean, we just missed <laughs> baseball and softball. So, and you know, no fault of our own. Man. No, no, it's not. We, we did not wish this. I don't mind. I don't mind telling you. So, you know, there's the, before we get into the football side of this, which is really what's caused a lot of confusion. Right. Do want to talk quickly about some of the other fall sports that are still still going to happen because a lot of those are a lot less um you know uh, interactive i guess you can say than football uh that would be volleyball and cross country so just give us a you know brief overview of where those two sports stand they're practicing right now uh, they're probably going to go ahead as long as uh as we discuss, the LHSAA moves into different phases, and we'll get in more detail of that later. If, if you're looking, and, and I'm strictly going by the chart that that Mr. Eddie Bonine gave to the uh, the House Committee on Monday. If you're if you're looking at what's going on there with cross country, and they're in phase two right now, and uh, this chart you can check it out with the stories that I filed uh, earlier this week on regarding these phases in phase four, but it's attached to that story. Go check it out on our website, livingstonparishnews.com. Um, but for cross country, they've got the green light starting in phase two, mm-hmm. so they can do everything right now, which is uh, that's great for them. Uh, and they've really probably been under the, the least amount of restrictions because you're you know you're obviously outside, right? Uh, which helps everything. With volleyball, it's a little bit different, but they're in the same boat. Once you get into phase two, they've got the green light to go all the way through for everything. So in that regard, you would have to think that their seasons might be right on schedule. Again, I say might. Sure. Because we, I, I don't want to say yes and and something happen and say, and you know. We, right. We, so, and, and and that's why we're here. And, and, and we are going to focus on football. There's a lot of... Like you and I have been been discussing over the last couple of days, you know, via text and on the phone, is that there's a lot of back and forth on social, especially on social media. People worried about seasons being canceled. People saying, you know, they shouldn't be canceled. You know, and a lot of this stuff is operating outside of of the realm of what these guys have to work with. Want to start off? You have spoken to coaches, athletic directors, and. LHSA director Eddie Bonine, correct? Yes. yes. So we've got a wide breadth of information to talk about today. Uh, first, I want to start with the man, the guy over it all, Mr. Mr. Bonine or Director Bonine, if you will. That that sounds very fascist. So we're just going to say Mr. Bonine. Mr. Bonine. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, one of the things that he's trying to reiterate with people, first and foremost, is that the LHSA has their phases which are loosely based on the state's phases. So let's start there. And you already brought it up a little bit. Obviously, he released a chart that said in this phase, this sport, these, each sport can do this in this phase, blah, blah, blah. Tell us a little bit about the fact that the LHSA has their own phases and the state has theirs. I'm going to go back to, I'm looking at this chart again. Swimming is right above volleyball. Swimming has a green light on everything in phase two. Okay. I'm looking at it again. Volleyball, you're able right now in phase two to practice and have inter-squad scrimmages. Okay. Now, the green light for volleyball would kick in in the LHS phase, phase three. Okay. Um, and I, this is just me looking at it again. That's why we do this. Sure. We want to make sure we're correct, obviously, on everything we do. But to, to answer your question, um, what I'm going to do is kind of take you through 
the process of putting together that story and how this kind of came together. Um, I think I was out covering something else on Monday. You texted me with this, uh, you know, football move into phase four. And you don't hear a lot about phase four. Sure. And anything. So when you see it, you kind of go, okay, what does this actually mean? So immediately for me, uh, you know, I sat down and started looking on the internet, trying to find what does phase four mean? And then for me, it was starting to make phone calls. What is phase four? And I'll be honest, you don't find a lot about phase four. Sure. So what I started doing was calling coaches and say, and, and once I started t- talking to, to coaches, you know, I, you know, Coach Surpass, Coach Westmoreland, Coach Mahaffey, um, you know, those are the three I, I quoted in, in the story. It became apparent that it's like, hey, we knew about this all along. It's something phase four is not new to us. It's not something that, and and maybe the, the public didn't know about phase four. So, Literally, as I file my story, my my wife looks over and we have some family members who work in the medical field. And literally, I file that first story. She kind of looks at me and goes, hey, I'm getting text from some people and people in the medical field. When they hear phase four, they're going by the state guidelines, which would require a vaccine or immunity, herd immunity. So I think that's where the confusion kind of came in. So for me, it's like, okay, let's get back on the phone and let's get some more clarification on this because we want to be correct in what we put out for you. Right. Um, So that was a couple more phone calls. And and matter of fact, when I got in touch with one of the coaches, um, you know, he's saying phase four and he he literally sent me a screenshot from the state uh, health department website showing what phase four is. Mm hmm. Um, so then another one of my phone calls was to Spencer Harris, Springfield principal, who was on the LHSA, uh, executive committee. Mm -hmm. And so I said, look, just in simple terms, clarify this for me. Um, are these phases the same as the state phases? And that's when I found out definitely for sure. No, they're not the same thing. The LHSA's phases are made up of based on recommendations of their committee and their council in the the reopening of sports. So, and the states and federal guidelines are different. So that's where I think the confusion, when you, like I said, when you see phase four, you're going, oh my gosh, we've got to have a vaccine. We've got to have immunity. And that's not necessarily what that means. Right. Just in plain terms, phase four for the LHSAA is getting past phase three. Okay. That's in simplest terms. Okay. And and so going from there, uh, take us into your conversation with Mr. Bonite. Um, I I actually uh I, I talked with Karen Hoyt. She okay. got me she got me his, uh Mr. Bonine's number. I texted him Monday evening uh and he called me back on Tuesday morning uh simply because he's <laughs> if you check social media right now, he's making the media rounds just to get the message out there and let people know this is what's going on. Uh he said he was he was answering these uh requests in the order they were they were received. And, uh, you know, when when I was able to get him on the phone for it was a little bit less than 10 minutes. But, yeah, you know, it's it's great. And I'll tell you, he's he's returning these phone calls, whatever you're asking. uh, It's a great thing, you know, because we're in a situation that that we're never we've never been in before. So in order to get this information out, uh, it was great, you know, to, to actually talk to the man. You know, who who does it? You know, yeah. I think that was my, my first real conversation with him other than running into him at, at, at championship events and things like that. Um, but he just reiterated, uh, he spoke to the Bessie board on Tuesday uh, regarding the reopening. And basically, when, you know, when I looked at it, it was basically almost verbatim what he told the Bessie board. Right. Uh, and and if you guys want to take a look at those, you can find these videos. Uh, he spoke to the House uh, Committee on Education on Monday ahead of this Bessie meeting. I'd highly recommend you guys go check those videos out. Uh, you can you can access them uh, just to see what's going on. Uh, you know because it, it's it's basic information that kind of puts you in line with what's happening. But uh, you know basically. It was the same thing. You know, phase four doesn't mean there needs to be a vaccine. 
it just opens the door, you know, when they get to phase four that they can proceed with football. Now we said, you know, what is that going to look like? I don't know. You know, does that mean we socially distance from sideline to sideline? At this point, you know, we don't know. But it opens the door. Sure. So, you know, let's let's talk about before we get into your interviews with coaches, let's talk about, you know, first right now, states in phase two and LHSAA is in phase two. Correct. Okay, so a little confusion there as well. But LHSAA is on their own timeline. And of course, as you said, once you enter phase three, all other fall sports are greenlit. But football's not. Foot, that opens the door for practices. Now, he discussed a few specific things that could happen in terms of football with practice in phase three. Tell us a little bit about those. Here's, and here's another thing. I think we talked about it before we, we hit the record button on this. But what you got right now, the LHSA released its guidelines right before the summer workout started on June 8th, or it was June 9th for Livingston Parish because they took a a, a storm day, if you will, the, the, on that first, sure, what, what sure. was supposed to be that first day. Um, so in phase two for the, LH, or for the LHSA, it's, you can have static groups of 25. Okay. For the state reopening in phase two, you can have groups of 50. Right. So automatically right there, you see, and that, and that's a big difference. That is. That, Especially that's, in that, football. That's a big difference. And and what's happening with, you know, for these groups of 25, for these bigger schools, you're looking at for football workouts, you know, say if you got 150 kids, you know, you're looking at multiple groups. You're have, having to run through and get everything. It's a little bit easier for the smaller schools who are basically operating in two groups, you know, and they can they can flop those guys out. And that's just what I've observed going to practices and, and seeing what they're doing. But that's the biggest the biggest deal. So right now, um, it would be to get into phase three and you have those groups of 50 people, which would allow for, like you said, for practice to kind of open up, which would allow them to, you know, you put the helmets on. Mr. Bowen, I said they could put the helmets on pads, tackling dummies, hand shields, and maybe a, you know, a, a center to quarterback exchange type deal. Okay. So that's what that would kind of open up for them if, if they get to that point. You, you got to get there first. That's the biggest, the biggest key. Did he discuss in any kind of detail what phase two to phase three looks like in terms of an exchange? You know, you talked about the quarterback center exchange. Like, what does that look like? Do they even know? Right now, and and. It, it, he kind of used the SEC analogy, uh, you know. Th- this is this is kind of, and I'll, I'm going to go back and I'm, I'm actually looking at the story right now. So if you guys see me scrolling down here, I'm looking at it right now. Um, this is this is what he said right now, which July 14th is when I talked to him, um, and he used the SEC. They're kind of waiting until the end of July <laughs> to decide what they're going to do with their season. Do they shorten it up or whatever? And what he said is is the governor's address, the next address that that uh, Governor Edwards gives regarding the phases and where we are uh, as a state is going to have probably going to have a bearing on what they do. So that's kind of what they're, he said, they've kind of worked in lockstep with the state in terms of moving their phases. And I don't see them changing that right now. So that would be my opinion totally, but he's, they're going to obviously base it on, uh, you know, what the state does. I got you. And of course, uh, one of the things we are looking towards is uh, an announcement Monday, which would be the 20th, potentially a new proclamation on the 24th. Uh, so, you know, we, we've had a, yeah, the, and those are going to be big days for sports going forward, um, especially with regard to football. And of course, as we discussed, you know, even at Springfield, you're still looking at a team of what, 40 guys, something like, they're about. And, and they're the 2A team. So it only goes up from there. Uh, So they're, you know, let's talk a little bit briefly before we, you know, and I keep putting off the coaching interviews. But one of the things you and I talked about, there was a letter that was written by a state senator. His name's Cleo Fields. If you don't know him, he's from right next door in East Baton Rouge Parish. And, you know, pushing for uh, some sports cancellations. And one of the things he said in the letter was, was, you know, against practice. Well, these teams have been practicing, so to speak. First, let's establish the difference between summer workouts and practice practice, yes. uh, because we know that we know the difference. Not everybody knows the difference. Yes. 
Uh, but they have been going through summer workouts. So first talk about that, and then I'll, I'll ask you a follow-up. Summer workouts is conditioning. Right. It's getting the kids back in shape, uh, you know, working on endurance, things like that. You know, uh, it's not necessarily hitting, putting on pads, you know, and that's where they're at right now, lifting weights, things like that. It's not practice, practice where you're going full bore on things. It's there's a difference. And that's and that's that's it. Bottom, you know, basic being basic. Sure. And so going from there. Practice, practice, of course, is is like you discussed. If they moved into phase three, they it would open some things up for football practice. Right. Of course, right now, two sports have pretty much a green light. Sp- swimming and cross country. Volleyball, pretty much a green light in phase three. Whereas, again, sort of a tiered approach with football because you're dealing with a lot of kids. Um, so, you know, talk a little bit about what it would look like you know, when when real practice starts for those other sports and then talk a little bit about what that sort of tiered approach might mean for football. For football, what you're looking at is when once you get to phase three, you can start that kind of it, it, can we go back to it again and I'm kind of, you know, it's practice where you can actually do things. You can put the the, the helmets on and you can kind of move around. Right now, the the kids in football are, you know, they're in shorts and T-shirts, just kind of running through things, getting conditioning down, things like that. It's going to be a little different. Um, Like I said, cross country's had that green light from phase one. Right. You know, so they've they've been able to – it it hasn't really – and I haven't really talked to any coaches. That that might be a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) uh, If you guys are listening, I might be making some phone calls. Andy, you're going to get a call. (laughs) There you go. There you go. So uh, and but they've had that green light and and it really it doesn't look like it, it's affected them too much. But what you're trying to do is obviously and that that's the big thing. Uh, you know, Mr. Bodine said to move on. You have to see those numbers start dropping. You know, for a static period. And he mentioned that the governor's phases normally last about 21 days. You know, but they said we they need to see 14, 21 to move to that that next phase. Right. So let's. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, we've talked about it. They, they're they still waiting for that announcement, just like a lot of people coming up Monday. Obviously, right now, masks are mandated. So we weren't really moving in a great direction. Hopefully, we've turned that around. That's going to have a lot of bearing on what happens with football. However, we have, you know, especially on top of the letter from the state center, you got a lot of people who are like, well, they should cancel or they are going to cancel. Let's move into these coaching interviews. You know, uh, based on what we've seen, that's not how schools are approaching it. That's not how systems are approaching it. And that's not how the LHSAA are approaching it. They're doing what they can to move forward. Tell us, let, let's work through these coaches. So let's start with Ryan at Springfield. I, I, you know, and you have to ask the question at this point, because when you look at the timeline here and, and how much time it's going to take to get through each of these phases, it doesn't look really good. So you have to ask the question, you know, or do you see it happening to where maybe the season could be pushed back? And basically, you know, and I, I'm looking at my story again, um, uh, you know, when I talked to Ryan, he said at this point, uh, I think that that's where we're headed, you know, it, for at least a, a, a maybe a later start or maybe a condensed season. Now, again, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it looks like where we're if you look at the timeline from when practice is supposed to start. Right. And when that first game is and you look at how many weeks it put, could potentially take to get through here. From phase to phase, it, we've got, I don't want to say problems, but it, it could create problems in terms of scheduling and how that schedule is supposed to work. Right. And, you know, from these guys, these are the coaches, boots on the ground. They're going to know their teams. And when you're talking about, you know, you're coming off conditioning, that first full pads practice kind of sets the tone for, for practice leading up to the season. Now, school starts so early, a lot of times you've got to deal with school leading up to that first game, which is usually a jamboree, what, third week of August? Mm-hmm. 
And then you got your season opener that last Friday in August or that first Friday in September, depending on how the calendar works out. So waiting to see what's going on, you know, next week's going to tell it kind of set that tone. Right. Right. On Monday. You know, every, everybody, I think, is going to be sitting down watching, you know, what the governor has to say and see how things proceed from there. And I mean, again, you know, these guys are moving forward with we're going to have a season. It just may be delayed right. because you got to have that time to get those kids acclimated to both school and practice. Yes. And this year is going to be different because both of those are going to be different. Yes. Yes. So. You know, I want to, I, I do, I want to talk specifically about what, you know, each coach kind of had to say about their own individual situation because you're dealing with five teams, a 2A, a 3A, and three 5As. And of course, the three 5As have a, a real interesting task before them because you got 100 kids on the team. And right now you're in phase, huh? And more. And right now you're in phase two, which means you can only have up to 25 people. So that's, you know, what, four five, or four up to five or six five, shifts? Five to six maybe waves coming through. Uh, I, I think I think with the largest team, I, I think it was six, I believe, uh, maybe at Live Oak, if I remember right. But, I mean, the, the 5A schools are in that boat, and and what they were doing was they're, they're breaking them up between offensive and, and defense, and then those waves come in between that, you know. And, and you, you know, keeping that social distancing, which it's a little easier when you're outside. Uh, when I went to Walker, it was uh, basically Coach Mahaffey and his staff had them line up five yards apart. And you can see it right there. It's right there on the field. And you go five yards apart, you know. And even when they, you know, when they're bringing the kids in for huddles at the end, it's like spread out. <laughs> I still want to talk to you, but spread out. Uh, and they, they've done a really good job with that uh, in, 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 in terms of keeping – everything apart uh albany i know uh coach Dennis and his staff are really big on the mask wearing and they've been that uh, since day one um you know he mentioned uh, he's got coach moore carmen moore on his staff now as his offensive coordinator uh coach moore yes he coached me in junior high that that was <laughs> we go back a ways but uh uh you know he he had open heart surgery so he said look we we got to take care of coach moore and make sure he's okay and then and i know they make sure they're wearing masks you know, when they're when they're inside working out with the kids and it's, you know, everybody's been taking the precautions. Everybody that, that I've been around is, has been doing what they're supposed to do in terms of these guidelines. So, you know, just kind of first sort of alleviating that fear that there won't be sports this fall. Obviously, we've talked about it. You know, one sport, volleyball, is just waiting to get to that phase three. So even if that's delayed, you're still looking at a season. Two sports are already greenlit. So, you know, when you're talking about football, we get focused on it here in Louisiana because it's it's a pastime. And right now, you know, you're watching the National Hockey League struggle, the NBA struggle, Major League Baseball struggle to try to do these reopenings. You're watching a lot of balls bouncing around at the college level as well. You know, so it's understandable that people are are getting real doom and gloom about high school football. But with the way that the LHSA is moving forward and the way these schools are moving forward, you know, it would stand to reason that while you may be looking at a delayed start, they're going to push for football to occur. That's what I mean. Nobody go back and watch Mr. Bonai's testimony on Monday. You know, there's been no cancellation of anything. You know, they haven't. Now, he said, uh, you know, there's been discussion about flipping seasons, you know, playing your spring sports in the fall and vice versa. But he said that's not the top option. Uh, that's not what they want to do. Um, but right now, you know, because it, 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 it pains me when you go through these social media posts sometimes when you're scrolling through and, and you see, oh, you know, my my son is not going to have that senior year of football. That's not what they're saying, folks. Right. They're not saying, you know, hey, football's not going to happen. And I, I say that as a, as a parent of a, of a high school athlete as well, you know. Yeah, he's a baseball player, and and you know we we went through it in the spring, and after playing only three JV games, they're done. I know what it's like. Nobody wants to see these kids not play, and they're got. I think they're going to make every effort to make sure it happens. There there hasn't, like I said, hasn't been any discussion of canceling anything. So, 
can you tell us a little bit about, like you said, uh, the 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 season flop is is or flip uh, is is kind of the last resort. What are some other things, you know, because there are some parents that might have to be prepared for, uh, you know, maybe you can't come to the game or maybe, you know, only parents can come. There's not going to be a full stands aren't going to be full of kids and and, and fans. What are some what are some of the contingency plans that are in place? Can you tell us? I, I, you know, there's been speculation out there and I, I don't want to go into like speculation and, okay. and, and what's happening you know uh i i know a report came out last week and and uh mr bonine was very clear in that testimony that he gave monday that anything that comes out is going to come from them uh come from the lhsa if anything changes right um and like i said yeah, please go watch it if you've got any questions about what's going on uh, he was fairly clear. I think the thing that 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 really spurred the conversations when you when it, it was phase four, when you hear phase four, it, uh, automatically the radar goes up and you're like, oh, my gosh. But he, like I said, he's done a, a, a good job of clearing that up. And, you know, Spencer Harris at, at Springfield's help helped out with that, too, and making sure that this is happening. And, and you know, that that's the biggest thing. Contingency plans, I, I don't know that they've, you know, discussed maybe shortening seasons and and you know it could happen but again we say could right we're not saying yes this is going to happen it, this is it's all it's this is the probably the most fluid situation i, I think we could have you know mm-hmm. things are going to change and just be ready right just be ready i don't want to say anything just be ready for change and i think that's something that we've I don't want to say we've gotten used to change with the, the with the coronavirus here, but that's kind of what's happened. Well, some have and some haven't, but it is important to understand that a lot of this is going to hinge on that decision that's made Monday. M- Monday's the big day. I mean that that's huge. That that I, you can't say it any more plain. Uh, you, you're going to figure out which direction things are going to go in, and it it, it hinges. I, I think it's going to hinge on numbers and what they look like. You know. Well, yes, and what they usually try to do for those decisions is look at a 14-day trend and see what's going on across the state, see what, and you know, maybe we could do a regional type move forward and some regions don't. It's going to be interesting to see what he has to say Monday. Uh, As of right now, though, case counts are increasing, hospitalizations are increasing. So it is important to understand that the state is, you know, it's not moving in a great direction. But it's not anything that we can't overcome. We already did it once. Right. Now, of course, the governor, uh, who is a West Point graduate, former military guy, said, you don't want to bleed for the same for the same land twice. We're going to have to, at least to a certain extent, but it's definitely doable. Please remember, folks, please, please, please remember that your actions and the way that you treat this is, has a lot of bearing on what happens with high school sports this year. And while, the as, as you have explained, sir, very well, while the LHSA's phases are not the same as the states, they do hinge upon them. And it is important to wear that mask, keep your hands washed, and distance socially in public. Mr. DeArmond, we do appreciate you taking the time. We appreciate you taking the time to go out and interview all these folks. Please, 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 guys, remember, and I'm going to let you reiterate this too, you know, th- this is not a doom and gloom situation. Three out of the four fall sports look like they're moving forward regardless the fourth one, which is football, just might might have a delayed uh, start. So, again, sir, thank you. No problem. No problem. And remember, uh, you know, like Mr. Bodine said, they as far as these phases go, they've kind of gone lockstep in what the state does, with what the state does. So, I, I, and I'm not saying that's what they'll do. It's just Monday's a big day. Monday is a big and day. And determining how this proceeds. Uh, I just don't want, like I said, I don't want anybody thinking, hey, there's not going to be any football season for, for anybody. Uh, nobody wants that for these kids. And But some early reports on Monday came out and said there would be no football. That is inaccurate. Right. Nobody's ever said they're canceling the season. So there is – you don't want to say hope. I think football is going to happen, and that's strictly my opinion. It just may look a little different this fall. Right. And may start – for public consumption a little later. A little late. Again, Mr. Rob DeArmond, our sports editor here at the Livingston Parish News, we appreciate uh, you going around getting those interviews and compiling everything. And, you know, 
You did. You gave people a little hope, but uh, you know, it's not just hope. These guys are pushing forward. These coaches, these systems, the LHSA, they want to play football. I, you you, you want to see all these kids be able to play. Everybody. Everybody. You know, but we have to be safe about it. Right. That's the biggest thing. One last time, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us for the Livingston Parish News Podcast. Uh, you can find it on Anchor FM, which also pushes it out to all podcast platforms. We post it on Facebook and Twitter. We also put it on our website, www.livingstonparishnews.com. Also in the description, we are going to include a link to that uh, interview video with Mr. Bonin. Well, a testimony video, if you will. So you can check that out. We have referenced it several times, so we want people to be able to watch it. We appreciate you guys joining us one last time. We are probably going to reconvene, especially once we get an idea of what happens Monday and then what's going to happen with the LHSA later in July as we move forward towards school. We hope you you all have a good day. Stay hopeful for high school sports. There plenty of it's going to happen, and it looks like football is going to happen too. That is, again, at this point, our opinion, but we do believe it's going to happen, and we will see you guys next time.